Welcome back to ECMID TV. You're with Michael Jackson and my new guest, Ursula Turetzbacher. And I hope I pronounced that correctly yes, from fine. Austria. Yes. Thank you so much. From the Center for Anti-Infective Agents in Vienna. It's nothing yes. to do with Russian spies. No. Anti-infective agents. Not, not at all. But it deals with um, all drugs and, and therapy approaches against infectious diseases. So that would mean antibacterials, antifungals, and antiviral agents. Excellent. But I'm really focusing on antibiotics. And I, I really want to focus on that with you, if we may, because um, previous guests on ECMA TV have talked about the need to understand this resistance to the antibiotic world that's out there at the moment. Mm -hmm. And resistance to antibiotics is something that you've worked a great deal with. How real is the problem? Unfortunately, it's really real. And despite advances in infection control and also stewardship, uh, resistant surveillance data show that uh, multi-drug resistant and extensively drug resistant and even pan-resistant uh, bacteria, especially gram-negatives, uh, are increasing uh, globally. So it's, uh, it's an issue that's it's very real. And is, we it, are is it more prevalent, Ursula, in the developed world rather than the emerging world? Uh, there are big differences in, in, uh, in the epidemiology. So in different locations, in different regions of the world, it's, it could be very, very different and we have different needs in, in different parts of the world. So we always have to think about what we are talking about, which, which regions in the world we are talking about. So the human response to antibiotics is changing faster than, than the world of antibiotics is changing. Yes, we are very much behind. Um, so we, we, we have this uh, huge resistance problem, and despite this resistance problem, uh, big pharmaceutical companies left the field of research and development of antibiotics and just moved to other fields that are more profitable. So that means uh, our pipelines uh, are not filled enough. They are too thin. And if pipelines are not filled enough, then the chances of getting future drugs is decreased. What you're saying, though, is fairly controversial. A little inflammatory, perhaps, could I say that? Yes, yes, it, it is a, a real problem because we have the medical need. Yes. And it's not really filled um, by the um, the current models of uh, developing antibiotics. So we really need something else. We are need you saying, new approaches. Are you saying there's a percentage of antibiotics that are then worthless that are currently being used in the marketplace right now? I mean, there are, we have lots of, of antibiotics because many of them have been developed in the 80s, 90s, uh, and they all have their little differences. And I, I would not say that um, they are useless. I mean, some may not be differentiated from others. Yes. Um, in general, we are just using them too much, and that's the reason why we have all this resistance. Uh, so how them. should we use antibiotics more effectively? We should use them when we really need them. <laughs> so it's very simple. In, uh, in, in real life, it's not simple at all because you, you don't always know if you really need it or not. So it's many of them are just given because you don't want to have a risk. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not that easy to use antibiotics in a responsible way, but that's where we, are, we should go. So we need to train the medical fraternity more in terms yeah, of their usage uh, and efficacy. Yes, of course, that's just one point. Another point would be uh, imp still improving in infection control um, and also uh, have better diagnostics available. And so there are lo lots of factors that need to be influenced. You mentioned that Big Pharma seems to be sailing along like the old fashioned steamship. Let's not yes. use the word Titanic. Let's just <laughs> use the word steamship. <laughs> sailing along. It's very hard to turn an yes. ocean going liner yes. around in size. And if we're developing this resistance to antibiotics as quickly as the human body is, as you say, yes. perhaps the ocean liner will turn slowly. Should we then be looking to the equivalent speedboat 
to be driving around and navigating through these yes. difficult and uncharted waters. That's exactly uh, one approach that uh, we should really look at and that's what we are doing. Uh, we have several problems. Uh, the traditional economic model for big pharma companies uh, was heavily depending on volume of sales. Yes. That means uh, they sold as much as possible. Um, and also on high prices uh, in, in other fields. For as much as possible. Yes. <laughs> and um, so both of these uh, models contradict uh, with responsible use of antibiotics and also uh, access to global access to new antibiotics for patients that could not afford very expensive drugs but still need them. So this these two models are not really um, matching our, our medical needs nowadays. So are antibiotics are becoming almost generic then? Is that what you're saying? Oh, the almost, existing yeah, ones? they are almost all of them are generic. So they're cheaply available and there is not much profit um, in, in this uh, antibiotic field anymore. So we need to find other uh, methods of getting new antibiotics and the awareness of this problem is really here, I mean, it's increasing and it, um, the problem of, of antibiotic resistance and the thin pipelines has been put very high on the political agenda now. So we, we are discussing solutions, there are lots of initiatives and uh, one uh, example for, for a big initiative is uh, the uh, new drug for bed bugs uh, program of the European Union. It's part of the... It's a very catchy uh, name. Yes. New drugs for yes, bad bugs. Exactly, and that's what we, are, what we need. So it's part of the, um, of the Innovative Medicines Initiative, uh, and it has lots of different programs. It looks at this um, uh, problem in general. Uh, one part of this, one project, is the Drive AB project. Uh, and this project um, uh, is very challenging because it develops new economic, new al um, very alternative methods um, to, to um, uh, get new drugs uh, in the development uh, pipelines and also um, uh, looking at responsible use and, and, and at access to these new antibiotics. Now you've mentioned the word pipeline several times and I'm aware that obviously here at ECMED we have a pipeline program um, and when I walked through the venue mm -hmm. prior to starting working on the TV channel earlier today, um, I was kind of intrigued because there's the pipeline program. I understand that new small SMEs, emerging companies, come and get the chance to pitch their work yes. to the bigger industry yes. and perhaps one or two parent companies that might be watching or big brothers that might be able yes. to assist. That's a very exciting development. You've been heavily involved in that. Yes. Uh, that's because of this Drive AB project and it's so challenging that we cannot achieve anything without involvement of all stakeholder groups. And one of the main stakeholder groups is small companies yes. that are focusing on antibacterial research and, and, and uh, development. Uh, so here at ECMIT, uh, we want to give them the opportunity to present their work and some of them do, do this. Uh, in addition, uh, to this, it's really a first this year yeah. for ECMIT uh, that we provide a stage for these small companies to present their work. The, and this work uh, may be the future of new antibiotics. There could be a breakthrough right here, right now at you, ECMIT 2015. You need, you need a field pipeline to, uh, to have a chance of getting a real good new drug. Now what intrigues me about that pipeline, this opportunity that mm -hmm. where everyone has to come down and make their pitch or make their presentation or unveil their research, whatever it might be, what was demand for presenting slots like? Yeah, it's, it's always a demand to show that there are companies out there uh, that we are not really only depending on big pharma. So um, there are about 50 to 60 European small companies um, and they are heavily involved in discovery and early research work for, for antibiotics. Um, and they are not really very well known. Yes. And I think um, they need just uh, also a stage and to present themselves. Here we are and we are doing important work for the future. 
Excellent. As a final question, whilst we battle through the sound of delegates being called yes. into their halls, um, and I hope it's not a fire alarm, I'm sure <laughs> no, it is. No, I don't think so. <laughs> As a final question, who are you expecting will be going to take up those seats to watch these new pipeline presentations coming through? Yeah, there are also new models. I mean, the old models was that big pharma companies would take it up in before phase three and then bring it on the market. But we have examples now that it's possible, even for a small company, to drive it through the clinical development and even wow. um, market it. We have examples for that, so we'll see. It's an option. I can see you're very excited about the program yes. as well. It's all going to unfold around yes. us at ECMED. Um, thank you for being with us on ECMED TV. You're A welcome. real pleasure. Good luck with your own work. Good luck with developing the pipeline. Something that's much needed across the industry. Thank you very Ursula, much. Thank you so much. Thank A real you. pleasure. Thank you.